The RNLI was established in 1824 and was then known as the National Society for Preservation of Life from Shipwreck. Thirty years later, the name was changed to the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. The RNLI currently operates 230 lifeboat stations around Britain's coastline, 31 in Wales and one here in Porthcawl. Since the charity has been founded, there have been countless examples of bravery shown by the RNLI volunteers. In August 2004, the lifeboat crew at Porthcawl were called to assist the fishing vessel, the Gower Pride, which had suffered engine failure near a sandbank just off Porthcawl. The helmsman that day was Aileen Jones. Um, it wasn't a beautiful summer's day, it was quite rough and windy. Uh, we launched. Um, he was having difficulties, he couldn't set his anchors, his engine had failed um, and he was being washed on sandbanks at uh, Nash. We couldn't cross the sandbank to go and get him so we uh, went right round up to East Nash Boy, went around that way, it was quite hairy on time. Uh, we went alongside him, um, put a tow line on, we couldn't get that close to him because it was too rough but he tied it on and, and it actually did part when we were trying to get him away from the bank. Went back around a second time, managed to get a crew member on board this time and to set another tow line up. Unfortunately, Gow Pride listed over onto us, um, hit one of our crew members of the damn boy, but he was fine. Uh, we pulled away very quickly and gently towed the Gow Pride then away from the sandbanks and uh, Mumbles Lifeboat then came to assist with the tow back to Port Call. We, we train regularly, we train every Wednesday, every Sunday um, for incidents like this. So then um, our training just gets put into practice then when we do a call like that and hopefully we do everything correctly, which we, we, which we, we did on that day. Often, our online crews are called out to rescue animals. In February 2010, Emma Reeves was walking her Hungarian Vizsla along the pier at Porthcawl. But no one could expect what was to happen next. But being part of the crew, uh, we all have to undertake in boat maintenance and station maintenance every Friday. Um, there's four of you team up and uh, you just take part in cleaning. And as we turned up on a Friday afternoon, uh, I was taken through uh, one of the, the new boys through um, some of the maintenance of the boat when there was a knock at the door. So uh, we, we opened the door to this, this man and woman, uh, a bit frantic, so we said, oh, what's the problem? We were just walking down the pier and um, she was off lead and um, she went right up to the edge of the pier, called her back and as she turned, her, her legs slipped down the slipway and she just fell straight into the sea. So I, I said, okay, no problem, can you show me where it was? I expected the dog to be actually swimming round and uh, being taken with the tide. But as we went up the pier, you could see the dog was actually stuck on the ledge on the end of the pier. There was a, an incoming tide. I knew we didn't have long to get this dog off. She was obviously screaming and yelping at you know, the bottom, so I couldn't get to her, so I was quite panicking, really. So I ran back and spoke to my uh, the lifeboat operations manager to have permission to go in the water. So two of us kitted up, we went in the water, uh, we swam over to the dog. They actually pulled her off of the, the side of the pier and uh, put her into the boat. And then the lifeboat recovered and went back up into the uh, station. Used their own jumpers to dry her with, you know, a blanket. So relieved to have her back. I thought I'd lost her. I didn't think I was going to get her back. But uh, yeah, really pleased to have her back, obviously. <laughs> To make these rescues possible, RNLI volunteers endure hours of training on a weekly basis. I spoke to Simon Ems to find out more. Obviously when you get to rescue sometimes things aren't as straightforward as uh, uh, perhaps a training exercise but that's where the difference comes in and you, you learn 
uh, from your training and obviously during the rescue you get to put that in practice uh, and you, you grow in confidence from there so uh, yeah training becomes a big part of what you do at the call out but also the other way call outs do have a big influence on the training in terms of what the call out is um, does actually uh, affect how we train on the station. Most weekly exercises uh, through various drills uh, obviously launch and recovery uh, searching, uh, towing, and uh, obviously uh, yeah, a few other drills that we do. Navigation training is uh, interesting, can be complicated, uh, but what makes it worse is uh, when you're actually out of the, the training room um, on the boat itself, uh, whether it's wet, windy, uh, rough seas, then it puts a completely different perspective on you know, shore-based training. Um, but yeah, you do need to know it. Uh, the net recovery, uh, again, um, normally we do that on low water uh, where the, the seas are rough, um, which involves driving the boat directly into a net which catches it. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, nerve, uh, obviously skill. Um, you've got to get it right first time. There's no um, second chance with that, so it does, as a helmsman, put you under uh, quite a lot of pressure. In 1838, Grace Darling became the first woman to be awarded the medal by the RNLI. Since then, 19 medals have been awarded to female crew members for outstanding acts of bravery. Earlier on in the film, I mentioned the challenging rescue of the fishing vessel the Gower Pride, which suffered engine failure near a sandbank just off Porth Gore. Following the rescue, Aileen Jones was awarded the Bronze Medal for Gallantry, making her the first lifeboat woman since 1888 be awarded a medal by the RNLI. Now, a woman who led a lifeboat crew through rough seas to rescue a stricken fishing vessel is to become the first female in over a century to receive a lifeboat bravery medal. Aileen Jones is the first woman in 116 years to receive the RNLI medal for gallantry. The guys on the crew as well got awarded um, bare limbs and different uh, things for that call out and um, I was just amazed when they said that I was going to get the bronze medal. The ceremony was um, in the May in 2005 and we all went up to the Barbican. Um, I got my medal there um, from the Duke of Kent, so it was a very good occasion, I really enjoyed it.